Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. And today's uh, episode 134. And uh, yes, I have not done a show in a while. Why? Because I've been swamped. Um, some of you folks, uh, just to give you a briefing, uh, um, September, uh, Sherry's father passed away and, uh, of course, leaving her mother. And so we had to go up to Central Oregon and where we had the RV. And we did the show prior to that saying uh, what was going on. And so we pretty much devoted about two months to getting things in order up there. And then uh, deciding to bring uh, uh, Sherry's mother here. And um, actually we were setting her up for assisted living. Um but she wanted to be in Arizona where it was, you know, warm and sunshine and the whole work. So uh, if you think that's an easy endeavor, think twice, people. Um, I don't think I've ever had our family scenario and, and all that stuff tested um, more than th- this was hard. And uh, we're fortunate with an unfortunate incident that Sherry actually uh, uh, lost her job, but she, it was a company got sold out, went to another state and they did a nice severance pay. So we thought we were going to go on vacation or something in October. And that was a big knot. And uh, so uh, luckily we've had this free time. I don't know how we would have been able to support this scenario uh, if that hadn't happened. And so uh, uh, sometimes uh, if you're kind of, um, questioning your faith, uh, I had to say that was a bit of a miracle of the fact that we had the opportunity to support her mother through this uh, crisis and then getting her uh, into a new lifestyle. And uh, she's what, about 80, 82 years old. So that's the scoop with that. So uh, uh, we'll leave it at that. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for the nice well wishes about uh, and and uh, concerns that we went through uh, during that. And um, Sherry's mother is still with us. Uh, definitely it impacts our lives every day, including even my studio. I disassembled and put into a smaller room uh, just to be able to accommodate her and set up a, a nice facility for her. And we're getting by. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's definitely sacrifices. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV Refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Well, today's subject is uh, actually kind of motivated by someone that's going to be interviewing us. And then in return, I'd like to interview him. And he's got a show called RV Prepper. And so I I don't know a whole lot about it, but all of us are going to find out more about it when we interview them. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when my interview will be on with them. Um, doesn't matter. So uh, the important thing is uh, um, that uh, this guy seems like a really neat guy. We talked a little bit, and I'd like to give him a shout out and see what we can do to give him some new traffic and some new subscribers and stuff. So uh, when we do get that, I'll have all the details for you where you can find his show and stuff like that. But in the meantime, uh, we're 
he got me thinking about the subject of RV and prepping. So you guys know I'm, I love RVing. I'm not doing it full time right now. Uh, could be doing it again in a few years. Um, and, uh, by the way, I've been getting a little bit of a glimpse of what Medicare looks like uh, with Sherry's mother here, uh, you know, taking care of things that she's doing. I tell you the truth, I, I'm almost looking forward to getting on Medicare um, uh, because uh, that's really what's driving the fact that Sherry and I are kind of um, anchored in because uh, uh, health care, it's, it's, I don't care what you say, it's, you know, you can get health care and have these really really high deductibles but um uh that that's not what i want <laughs> Just, you know to drop ten thousand dollars before you actually even get any coverage that's a lot of dough i don't care what you say but anyway uh um uh you know, we'll get back on the road again. And we were averagely, we were just in our RV for over well, two months. So, uh, yeah, we're using it a lot, just not full time. So, sorry guys, not a full timer right now. D I've done it twice and I loved it and I'll probably do it again. But uh, I'd probably be more of a snowbird kind of person or actually a, uh, somebody that goes up north when it's too hot here in Arizona. But the subject I want to talk about is prepping especially prepping if you're in an RV and uh, cuz I've heard some people well I'm an RV I got a made of shit at the fan you know uh, uh I got an RV it's all self-contained and stuff and and, and uh this points to all that no doubt um but I got to thinking let's think this through a little bit so let's say well you could be in an RV park but let's say you're in BLM the ultimate nomad kind of scenario and shit it's the fan powers are off can't gas pumps aren't working anymore you can't go to grocery stores anymore um and, and it's insane and uh uh it, i'm sure there's looting and there's probably you know fend for yourself kind of thing going on a little bit so think about this thing it's like you get this big old rv could be a trailer could be a, a, a class c could be a, a you know a, a diesel pusher or whatever and you're good for whatever fuel you have in that tank and you're good for whatever water you have in those tanks and you're good for as much as you can hold in your septic um, you're going to start having a problem after a few weeks um, to go into town is not wise because it's going to be all havoc uh, you know, fuel is uh, probably going to be quite interesting to find a way to get any um, you know maybe siphoning fuel out of abandoned cars or things like that but uh, uh, you're gonna have a problem on your hands so what do you, you know what's some of the things that we could do and uh, one of the things I did and I actually did a video on it years ago of uh, we actually, you know, you can buy those buckets of uh, seven days worth of food or something like that for two in those uh, in a dried state where you just add water. And so I would highly recommend that. I know you don't have a whole lot of room on your rig, but you know, you ever thought about a crisis? You maybe you get broke down on BLM land and you actually got yourself to a place where you're not seeing many people and you need to hold out longer. Uh, you'd be darn glad you have some of that stuff. Um, and, you know, it's like, well, I got a refrigerator. Well, that's only good till the propane runs out. And uh, there's only uh, in, you know, just because you have solar or something like that, you're still going to have some issues. You're going to have a lot of issues. And you're going to be in territory you're not familiar with. And uh, so I would really suggest that at least prep yourself up for, seven to 14 days of uh, uh, easy access food that can be made with very little water um, just in case something happened. And boy, if you're hanging out in California's and stuff like that, there's there's some people that are starting to get some uh, uh, true feelings of what it could be like if shit hit the fan, um, if we had a crisis. And I'm not saying there's going to be one, but... Uh, don't you hate it if you thought about it, maybe um, dwelled on it a little bit and never did anything about it and something happened? Then you feel like an idiot. 
And it's like, what's it going to hurt to have two weeks worth of food in your RV that's just stored away? And what's it going to hurt to keep a couple of cases of water, bottled water or something, uh, in some of the little, you know, spread out in the compartments of your RV just for backup water? For at least you can make coffee and make a couple of meals out of the, um, you know, just a whole off and stuff. Obviously, you'd want to cut off. Uh, how much you know water you're using uh, for leisure? Uh, a little less showers, a little bit flushing. Maybe uh, you stop using your holding tanks and uh, start doing the old bucket trick. Um, who knows? Um, but prepping can get kind of interesting. And and then um, some of the other subjects that come up is: Do you have anything? You know, you're kind of a sitting duck out there. And, uh, you know, people in the cities are going to be heading out to the away from the city. That's the worst place to be. And they're going to come across resources like you and try to take it. So it's like, well, what are you doing for safety? Or what are you doing for um, prevention? Or what are you doing for uh, protection against uh, invaders or someone who wants to loot you? Uh, so firearms, do you guys have any? Do you keep any? Are you against them? Um, and of course, everybody, you, you hear all this stuff like people want to take our guns away and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, think twice about what you're thinking about there. Uh, it, the, the guns aren't bad. It's the people behind the guns. I certainly understand registrations and definitely I'm uh, trying to detect mental illness and things like that. If there's a way to do that, uh, I think a lot of us would agree that, yeah, that'd be great. But reality says uh, taking guns away from everyone is not a wise idea. And, and, and the United States was designed to uh, make sure the government could not overrun us. And so that was what the right to bear arms was one of the reasons so important to having a country that um, can't get out of control or its government. So uh, that was the purpose for it. And uh, some people forget that. Dog waste is never fun to deal with. You should always be using a quality dog waste bag. They should be strong, leak proof, and have easy tie handles. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags is that bag. Eco-friendly, lemon scented, easy to use every time. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags come in a two-month supply in sheets and in rolls. Hop over to Amazon.com right now and get your cost-effective Ranger Rob Poopy Bags today. Stop using low-quality, cheap dog waste bags when you now have the option for Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. We love and care about you and your pets. Yes, sir, Bob, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, number one in my book. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, if, yeah, if you get a chance, give them a try. Um, I was talking to the RV prepper guy. He was like, uh, you know, uh, he was asking about the story about Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. And, was, and I've told you before is my pet peeve was I was RVing full time was people not picking up even in a little dog park that supplied the bags there, which suck anyway. But uh when we were traveling, I always tried to order my own bags because I like the ones with handles, and I couldn't always get them, and it was frustrating. And then I, um, uh, they were kind of small. Anyway, so I just decided to create my own. It was, you know, if you have a pet peeve out there, it's like sometimes you need to do something about it. Mine was making a really good dog waste bag and keeping them affordable. So anyway, uh. You know, uh, if you get a chance, it really it helps RV Talk Radio, it helps our channels, it helps our radio stations, uh, and it helps me and Sherry, and we appreciate it. So please get a chance. Go to Amazon. Go check out Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. That's P-O-P-P-O-O-P-Y, Poopy Bags. And uh, uh, grab a bag and try them. Uh, I promise you, you'll love them. And uh uh, once you use a Ranger Rob poopy bag, you want you won't want to go back. <laughs> I'm telling you, good stuff. And you can get them on rolls too. By the way, uh, we sell them on sheets, or you can get them on rolls. And we also have a, a package where you can get a, the dispenser that will fit our rolls. Our rolls are bigger than the other people's rolls because 
we have really big, really nice bags, and we had to make a special, uh, we actually had to get special dies made to make our poopy bags on rolls so we could keep them the same size. And then we had to make sure and use a fabric dispenser that would actually fit our bags. So, uh, uh, yeah, just because they're on rolls doesn't mean they're not, any, uh, not as nice as the ones in sheets. So check them out. You're really doing us a favor, and you're doing the dog parks and our parks and everything else a favor too by picking up after your dog well another little pet peeve that i've been kind of well not pet peeve it's kind of a concern and I, i've been bringing it up and i think a lot and also the guy named rob his name's rob too on a little house on a road and yes there's pros and cons of people that like that particular channel but what i like about him is he's a realist I mean, just a plain old realist. And it's getting insane out there. More and more. The stories aren't hard to find. Uh, whether there's crime, uh, whether people are getting hurt, uh, and the way people are treating our uh, BLM land and our camping grounds and, and stuff. And it's like, and I know most of my listeners are probably very responsible people. And I don't know the solution to the problem of people not taking care of our uh, our campsites and our national and state parks and things like that. And I mean, literally showing things where people are throwing garbage on the ground and stuff and the garbage cans right across the street. It's like, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe it's age, but... I mean, are, let me ask you a, a, a question. When you go to the grocery store, are you one of those people that leave the grocery cart in the middle of the parking lot so it's because you don't want to walk it all the way to the return section? Or do you literally take your cart back to the return section? I got, I've confessed in my younger days, probably would have left it. In my older days, I'm going, you know, what's it going to, this is not going to kill me to take my cart 30 seconds to get it over there and and not only that sometimes i'll straighten up the carts in there to make it easier for the guy to take them back to the store and i feel good about that it's a dumb little thing and it's just like going to these parks and you got garbage and stuff keep a garbage bag around the campfire walk it across the street put it in the garbage it's not hard and and and, and once you got the habit of doing it you just don't think twice about it but uh, throwing things in the fire pit, you know, burning up cans or trying to burn a bottle or something, don't do that. It's just set up a garbage bag. It's real simple. And then get in the habit of just everybody get like done with something. Hey, can you put my garbage in that bag there? And then when you guys are done sitting around the campfires or whatever you're doing, uh, take it across the street, put it in the garbage can. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Of course, I mean, and I know who I'm, you know, the people are listening to my show, most of these people, you guys know that. And a lot of you guys are probably doing that. But how do we, how do we police? How do we get those folks? We don't know exactly who they are. I can't say it's the nomads. I can't say it's the young people. Most likely it's probably younger because of a uh, lack of, uh, uh, knowing the cause and effect. Um, and uh, a lot of times uh, there's that attitude that the everything's about me. This is my property. Uh, uh, I pay taxes, a whole that kind of thing. And uh, um, But, uh, you know, I know older folks are just as bad. Uh, just like uh, I was just watching on the news where they're having trouble with um, airports where people, you know, you go to pick up somebody, you're not supposed to park there other than when you're picking up someone. So they ask you to stay in the cell phone parking lot till you're called and then you get called and you, then you come up and then pick up uh, your person. Uh, and there's people that still go out there and park and sit there and sit there and cause all kinds of havoc with the traffic. And, uh, and then they actually interviewed some of those people and they just have this attitude like, Oh, I didn't see the sign or uh, I don't really care and uh, I'm doing it because I'm handicapped or or some kind of weird story and of course it's all about them it's not the cause and effect 
uh, or how it impacts others. It's just all about them. And uh, I, I guess we're starting to see that in the RV industry, and we're starting to see that with the nomads and all these kind of things. Is uh, um, uh, you know, some of them are hitting the road because of that attitude. Is I don't want to do that nine to five. I don't want to be in the corporate scene. I don't want to be the American dream kind of thing. And and uh, I want to be free. I want to hit the road and, and I want to do what I want to do. And and work when I want to work and all those kind of attitudes and no matter how hard you try to justify it it doesn't work um, I get it's I guess like politics too is like oh socialism it'll take care of all of us we'll get stuff for free uh, or communism and let us let the government take care of us and then they have no idea What's going to happen? Greed and corruption and the whole works happens every single time. And uh, there's a reason why typically the, the structure is go to school, get a job, have a family, uh, build up your things, retire. Or the reason we kind of have that layout is because it actually works. It's not easy and it's not fun. And uh, uh, everybody's got a different story with that, but typically... This is how it works. You kind of got to earn it. And uh, I know I said that terrible thing. Got to earn it. <laughs> Put in your time. You can do it. Give it a try. Well, this is the part of the show where I got to maybe put more invites out for in interviews. I've actually got some folks lined up. I just got to got to get it done. It's like, um, uh, I'm spread real thin guys. I'm sorry. Um, life is kind of thrown, a uh, <laughs> curve at us a little bit and, uh, we're trying to get our, wrap our hands around it. So bear with us and we'll get our shows uh, out on a regular Christ, um, uh, calendar day. Uh, we always shoot for Mondays, by the way, uh, to have our shows come out. And I just want to remind you, you can find us on Spreaker. Uh, which is a great platform. Uh, we're also on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn. Uh, of course, we're syndicated on Good Talk Radio. You can catch all our episodes um, on Saturdays and Sundays. And, um, of course, if you have a podcast or a show and you're interested in getting syndicated, give us a holler. Um, hopefully, what kind of, you know, like this RV prepper guy I was talking about earlier, I told him all about it. Hey, if he wants to be syndicated, uh, um, no, we're not, and if it's RV related, so what? Um, it, it's no, we're not worried about competition. We're, we're, we like our show. We have fun. We talk about lifestyles here and, uh, it's a casual show and it's not real commercially. And, um, you know, we push our little poopy bags and, uh, every once in a while, like the Ford refrigeration people, they're really good people. And, uh, we, uh, we're happy to run their ad and, uh, so yeah, we're easy going, but yeah, if you'd like to get interviewed, uh, give us a holler. Um, we typically like to do a Skype interview, um, so be prepared to use Skype, uh, and we typically will turn it into a live show. The reason we like to do that is when we do have a guest, we want to give them as much exposure as possible. So when we take it past the audio part of this, and uh, we actually get, give people the visual, it's kind of fun. And so uh, yeah, um, if you can't do a visual, don't know, uh, your situation doesn't let you have Skype, uh, we can do an audio, no problem, over the phone type of thing. We've done it before. Um, I used to go after all the new growing channels and stuff like that, and I've told you in the past that uh, they're all enthusiastic. They want to get the exposure, and they're right on it. They do an interview, and oh, Six months later, they don't want anything to do with you once their numbers get real high. And yet, uh, we have so many people that we did interviews for. They grew, and and then uh, you know, it's you can kind of tell the ones that are doing channels because they're it's fun for them. They like to share their story, and others that they're just uh, trying to make a living off of this stuff. And it really, uh, you know, every other thing is. Every other show is the 10 best products out there for RVing or best septic products out there. Or um, here's some batteries and things I want to do a review on. And uh, 
And hey, you know, we do a couple of those too, but uh, very rare. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, the, those are what I call like the career YouTube channel people. And uh, they really depend on that income. And uh, so they can live this uh, freedom uh, and break tradition. And, uh, uh, and I, I mean, I've been out there. I can see why they want to do it. Um, but it's going to get you. In the, in the long run, and uh, yeah, so power to you. If it works for you, I am happy for you. Uh, but typically, uh, I would work in that career, get that portfolio going a little bit. Um, then when you, uh, if you want to do something in your late 30s or 40s, earlier than a normal retirement, uh, be a little easier because you have skills. Yeah, skills. Um, so, uh, and I'm not talking about you have to be a four-year degree, degree kind of person. I'm talking about skills like electrician, avionics, um, plumbing, welding, whew, um, uh, landscaping, water systems. Um, there's never enough of those kind of people. And uh, so uh, some of those jobs you can guarantee yourself work almost anywhere you go. And that's a good feeling. But typically, I want you to have a little bit of experience, a little bit of a resume, portfolio will be good. But uh, yeah, anyway. Um, but don't forget, you can uh, catch our show uh, on these different platforms. And uh, you can find us on YouTube, uh, all kinds of good stuff. So, uh, but yeah, if you're interested in putting your show or would like uh, to interview your channel uh, and you have uh, good intentions and uh, of course, we want to help build your numbers up. And of course, we want to get your links out there for people to follow you. Um, but uh, don't forget the little guy. <laughs> that would be me, the little guy. <laughs> so, and I've seen it over and over and over again. Uh, and uh, uh, But not all of them. Not all of them. There's a couple out there not too shabby. So, uh, yeah. Uh, give us a holler. Um, you can also email me at rob at RV Talk Radio uh, if you want to talk to me directly. Uh, of course, you could call our business line. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Well, right after that section is like, oh, there is something, there is a product I want to talk to you about. Actually, I'm not putting a link and I'm not, um, I might put a link to it. Um, I did buy mine on Amazon. Uh, I got to tell you about, and, and I'm doing some cooking videos about it. Uh, I bought a Blackstone grill. Um, and, uh, oh my gosh. And if you know what that is, uh, they come in different sizes. I think you can get like a 36 inch, like, a, you know, you measure it like a television or, um, I got the 28 cause I needed to fit it between my Traeger and the house. Uh, and then they get these mobile ones um, that you can put in an RV. And let me tell you, what a great way to cook. Oh my gosh, why I didn't get one sooner. So uh, uh, we got ours put together. I thought it was going to be a night, but I hate putting things together. I wish this stuff would come together already. But anyway, so we put it together. Wasn't that bad. I whined about it, but you know, you get it done, you feel good about yourself. Anyway, so we get this black stone put together, and uh, then you got to season it. So I did a video uh, on cooking with Ranger Rob, which is another channel of mine, and shows you us uh, seasoning it. It takes a while. And, of course, uh, I get uh, uh, some of my critics out there, you didn't season it enough. And I was like, well, it says the season like five or six times at first, but it's going to continue to season so, uh, and I've already seen it. I've used it so many times now. It's already starting to blacken and get a good season look to it. So I understand uh, seasoning. Is so it's all about seasoning, getting that iron grill, you know, just right, like a good iron skillet. So anyway, um, but yeah, my gosh. I mean, when you're like cooking pancakes or, or uh, French toast and stuff, it's like you can do it all at once and they come out like a restaurant. They're awesome, I'm telling you. And uh, for the little portable ones, I think they're just over a hundred bucks. Uh, the 28 inch is was under 200. 
I got a kit and a lot of the little things that go with it, so I spent more on that, and I got a cover for it. Um, but yeah, my gosh, people, uh, go look at them. Um, I'll put the link below. Um, not pushing the product. I'm just telling you something that I've, I've just fell in love with. I um, mean, you guys know I love my Traeger. And by the way, I learned about Traeger cooking as an RVer because you can get the uh, Traeger Junior. And I, I ran into a handful of people that had Traegers at their RV um, parks parking area. And I just like, that is the coolest thing ever. And uh, which is a pellet wood stove. Um, the, and it's electric. And uh, oh my gosh, it's just I use, I, I'm going to wear mine out. I tell you, I use it at least three to four times every week. Uh, I love my trigger. But this Blackstone, let me tell you, um, I don't know if you have the problem. You probably have the problem like in an RV too, cooking bacon and certain things in the house and your your RV smells like bacon and eggs for you know half the afternoon um, when you could just run outside and do all that kind of stuff on the Blackstone. Um, keep all those outside and it's really been great for the house too because we don't have one of those vents that vent outside it's one of those vents under the uh, thing that push the stuff right back into the house it's like well what, why the hell do you even have those anyway so uh, um, yeah Blackstone Grill uh, I'll put a link to the 28 inch like I got and then they got these really cool portable ones that you can get which is propane too you just use the green propane uh, canister and uh, if I would have known I would have had one for my RV um, I, I just I don't know I just never came around to seeing it but it's it's like cooking on all those big you know um, grills that people uh, that restaurants have in their back uh, of their house but uh, anyway the you know nice even heat um, uh, easy to clean by the way you think oh great another thing you got to clean but Oh man, you just scrape it off, you heat it up to high temperature, squirt water on it, wipe it down with a damp cloth, voila, uh, cover, uh, cool it off, put the cover on, you're good. And you, and you actually want to keep a little bit of an oil film on it. And so, uh, uh, yeah, it's just uh, a wonderful, wonderful product. I highly recommend it. Now I, I definitely want to change the subject to the subject of dying. Yeah, dying. And... Uh, I don't care if you live in a house or an RV. I got to I got to put this out there. Dying sucks. <laughs> but what's worse is um caregiving in the scenario there and uh uh so lessons learned. Uh which a lot of this we had in place. Make sure if you haven't done it yet to have a will for your kids and a living will. Get that done and make sure that if you lose a spouse, and in this particular case, uh, uh, Sherry's father passed away, which they kind of didn't expect to happen. And so she was not, she didn't know anything about the books. She didn't know anything about anything of, of that kind of stuff, didn't care about it and stuff. And so um, luckily built into their will, which automatically when you have a will like that, the will is uh, for the husband goes for the, the wife. And then the wife's will has to be uh, set up in a right away where uh, you want to give, um, uh, make sure you have, you know, executor, somebody that you really, really know will do the job for you. And uh, to give them power of attorney then instead of seeking it once it's happened. Really important because, oh my gosh, it wasn't the fact that we had a lot of time. Sherry, which is the executor to this scenario, uh, spent weeks on the phone and and everything was right. I mean, this is where everything was done right scenario. Imagine when it wasn't. Um, and, um, you know, getting names changed over from the person that's passed away to just the spouse that's living. Uh, also putting her name on the account so she could manage the funds for her um and so forth and then i mean it has to do with investments has to do with banks you were talking about bills um and then when it comes to doctors and things like that once again without that power of attorney without the documentation everything is a total pain in the ass <laughs> now we were fortunate and a lot of it was just a pain 
Um, and uh, so, yeah, lesson learned there. Um, caregiving, uh, if you haven't thought it over, and what I'm talking about is now I'm talking about me and Sherry and things I may not have thought about. Um, I already told my kids, if I get to a point that I need that much help, take me to Mount Rainier, find the snowiest um, trail, and put like a little stick on my head with a little dangly thing and say, uh, walk towards the little carrot. And just tell me to just, and uh, wait a few hours and then make a phone call. I lost my father in the snow. Because um, I, uh, even with lots of funds, and so I cannot and will not, do not want to, and I sometimes we don't have a choice, want to be a burden to my children. And my question is, do you? So, you know, uh, we the our scenario was we were really sure that it was going to be the other way around, and it what didn't happen. And so everybody's caught off guard. None of the kids uh, that were involved in this were in a p position to take care of uh, their mother, except Sherry and I, which we knew that, you know, we, we said we knew we were executors, all that stuff, but we even thought, oh, it's going to be the other way around. So we did not expect to be caregivers. And of course, you just like, you, you know, it's Sherry's mother, and you want to take care of her and all that stuff. So, and, of course, it's a little harder when it's not a bloodline like myself going, oh, my gosh, everything in your life that Sherry and I and her, you know, we were living, doing our thing. I've got my studios and radio stations and stuff. Everything, if you have someone move into you with your house, will be affected. Everything. Everything. The bathroom, the kitchen, the eating habits. The television, the shows you watch, um, and then, and then, of course, we're dealing with the you know, the oxygen hose thing. Um, I you no, know, I'm not using the right terminology. But Sherry's on top of this stuff, so you got that down the hallway all the time. Um, uh, I vape, and I, I like to vape in the house once in a while. Well, now I feel guilty if I do it in a house, so um, I find myself hiding a lot. Um, and uh, I can't help it. I'm not, I don't, I, I, yeah, I'm doing everything I can to make her life comfortable um, as a provider. And also I'm, um, you know, obviously supporting my wife and that's the most important thing. But oh my God, if you guys have not thought about this and I know that this particular, they did not think this would happen and it did you need to think about the scenario and what you're going to do. Who's going to care for you? Who's going to manage your funds? Which child or person are you going to be executor? Are they willing to take you in or take your wife in? Um, do they have the resources? Um, are, uh, are they smart? Are they going to be uh, wise? Are they going to uh, protect your uh, investments? Things like that. Do they have ethics? Uh, and do you have the paperwork in place? And if you don't have it done, get it done now, not later. Like as soon as you're done listening to the podcast, get on the phone with a lawyer or start simple and hire legal zoom or something and get some paperwork in place. Please. You've got to, I'm, we're living this. We had the paperwork in place and we're, and it's still hard incredibly incredibly hard you have no idea the impact that you will have on your children or the person that's going to be your caregiver you have no idea think about it think about your rv and let's say you suddenly have to take care of your mother-in-law uh how would that change your life and they can't get around they can't leave anytime they want you can't leave the house without um, worrying about them, communication, emergencies, prescriptions. Oh, there is some fun. If you travel, how the hell are you going to handle that? It's insane, people. I'm telling you, 
it's more than we thought. And we were like, yeah, sure, we're going to be executors. We'll be happy to be the people that you can. And, and we are, and we're going to be, and continue to be. But it was 100 times more than we imagined. Because first of all, it was reverse of how we thought it would turn out. And two, everything, <laughs> your house, your furniture, your everything, uh, plus um, what I had for a nice studio, I had to disassemble and, and make that room up. It's the only thing we could do to accommodate her. And then, uh, then when you got down here, what we thought was going to work didn't necessarily work. Um, wheelchairs, walkers, canes. Um, then, of course, we're talking about hearing. So the television is on Richter scale. And if you guys know me, uh, and I, I don't have a problem with anybody's different beliefs, but I tend to be on the conservative side. Doesn't mean I love Trump or anything like that. He's a dingling sometimes, but I like what he does. He's keeping his promises. That's cool. The guy's kind of a weirdo. But anyway, she loves CNN. And when you're at her house, you can't even talk to your wife next to you on the couch because the TV's so loud. And then going through the nightmare of hearing to me, hearing CNN all day long talk crap. And, and by the way, Fox does it too. So I don't watch either one anymore. I stopped. I can't take the negativity. I, really, it's, it's too much. I can hardly handle the local news. I love the local news until they talk about politics and some reason they think they have to put an opinion in it. Just give us the news. <laughs> you don't think I'm passionate about this? <laughs> I'm losing it here, guys. <laughs> Seriously, this has been the hardest thing ever. Think about what I'm telling you. And yes, I. and this affects, if you're an RVer, this can affect you. What the heck's going to happen if you're RVing and you're the only driver to say it's the guy and you're the only driver. The wife never drives it. And also uh, there's all these things you always take care of and suddenly you just die. You're out there working on the RV and you just drop dead. What the hell's going to happen? Do you know? Do you have things in place? Do you have a backup plan? Have you talked about these issues with your uh, children? I can guarantee you, even if you had to talk with your children, you cannot imagine how their lives are going to change. And they're going to be pissed at you. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm, I mean, her husband, I we're kind of friends and stuff. I didn't always get along with her. <laughs> and she's living in my house now. I'm just cursing him, saying, you didn't have this set up. I mean, other than you did have your paperwork in place, but oh my gosh, we had no idea that every aspect of our lives is affected. And even once we get her in assisted care, you wouldn't believe what it takes to do all this. I mean, we had to interview all kinds of assisted care places. And we got to get doctors and we got to take her to uh, hearing I and mean, uh, she's having teeth problems. So we got denture things going on. Uh, someone's got to get her to all these appointments. She doesn't drive. She can't drive. Medications. All these things could happen to you. Could And then this could all dump into your kids' lap. What have you done? What are you doing to get them one prepared two have the resources and make sure you make it clear that you, they know what your intentions are what you want because you may have to deal with the worst things like um uh old timers or something like that we're not dealing with that we are dealing with short term memory a little bit but not, nothing that's a diagnosed problem and, uh, you know, they sleep more. And it's like, well, at least you don't have to worry about being quiet because I can't hear you. <laughs> and then you'll go somewhere and, and they'll tell you, 
I forgot my hearing aid. So, you know, the whole time they can't hear anything. Um, it's hard. And you have to be understanding and loving. But no matter how you try to picture it, how you try to prepare, you're not prepared. It's the hardest thing that me and Sherry have ever had to do in our lives. And we've seen shit. And this was, is the biggest challenge, not only for the fact that we have somebody new in the house and it's caregiving, it's hard in a marriage too. Because one's, you know, related to this, you know, so, you know, like if I had to take care of one of my kids that was related to me, I wouldn't think twice about all this. But when they're not related to you, you can't help but not be quite as enthusiastic as if there was a bloodline or something. Just telling the truth. Don't be mad at me about telling the truth. I'm telling you. You need to think about it. And if you haven't thought about it, and I don't care if you're old or not, if you got family involved and if you died, what would be the cause and effect? Well, we know cause, cause, whatever. But how would that affect people that care about you? Would it be good or bad? And what could you do ahead of time to make it a little easier? Food for thought, people. Food for thought. So uh, I'm going to share a little travel story with you, and it, it's, it's it's kind of a nightmare. Has to do with traveling, not necessarily RV, but it could happen to you, even in the lifestyle that you're in now, whether you're an RV or not. So we decide we're going to, and it goes back to the subject and the prior thing I just talked about. So we decide we're going to bring Sherry's mother home to Arizona. 1,200 miles away. Okay, so uh, what I didn't mention to you, that we also inherited two more cats. You heard right. I already have a cat. That's three cats total. And, of course, we have our dog. And, of course, when I went up there, I brought the cat and dog with us because I didn't want to put them in a motel or keep or anything. So I had to bring the animals with me up to Oregon while we're going through the transition of getting everything set up. And we made the executive decision that she wanted to go south. First, we thought we'd see if we could, you know, how well we do with her living with us. Found out it's just too much. And she has the right mindset. She knew the sister living was coming. So she wanted to be down here. So just keep that in mind. Nothing bad's going on. Everybody's happy. So here's the story. (laughs) So it's a long drive. She didn't want to fly because of the cats. It's like, it's a really hard drive. And so we decided to do it hard, hard drive. Get it over with. Because when you hear this story, you'll see why. So imagine we're driving from Oregon. We get all the way down to Toppenish, which is in Nevada. Why did we choose Toppenish? Well, Toppenish, first, it's a casino hotel. And they accept pets. Now, by the way, when you bring pets to a, a motel, they don't necessarily want cats. Dogs, for some reason, cats, uh-uh. But in this case, luckily, Toppenish um, Casino there, uh, called the Station Casino, uh, they're cool with cats. So we drove all, all day long. And I didn't want to stop just because I knew what the nightmare was going to be when we got there. So imagine we got two cars. We got her car, which is a RAV4. And the reason we're bringing her car down because it has room to hold wheelchairs and things like that. So we put the cats in that rig. I had the truck and I was pulling a U-Haul trailer. So cool. I had Cinder with me and I also had our cat too because it was like the cats are used to Our cat tra- travels great. So is Cinder. So, um, Anyway, so we get to this motel, and imagine when it's like, first you go in there and say, okay, we got four animals. Well, they said yes to that. But then you have to take someone who's very frail up to the room with oxygen. Imagine the equipment there. Then get them sat in and then start bringing the cats up one by one. 
cats come with litter boxes. So then you got to carry all those up. We haven't talked about regular luggage yet. And then the dog, then the luggage, and then just the, you know, uh, uncomfortableness of the room itself and getting her settled and all that stuff. Thank God I had a casino Sherry and I could take once we got her settled in. The best thing I can say about the casino is we won like $300. Um, it still seemed like a miserable night. Couldn't sleep because you had that oxygen machine running all night. Uh, a dog and a double bed and animals and uh, cats and all that. It was terrible. <laughs> it was the worst motel experience in my life. And uh, uh, of course, then you got to think about reversing that whole thing to get everybody back into the cars, the cats into the cars, the dog into the cars, the uh, suitcases into the car, and an elderly person that takes forever to get anywhere and needs the rest just for that little bit of rest. It was hard. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my travel nightmare. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But, uh, yeah, you know, look at the funny part of it. Really, try to look at the funny part of it. It's got to be something funny about it. So, guys, we're getting to the end of the show here, not too far away here. And uh, I do want to thank you for um, uh, listening to uh, RV Talk Radio. Looking forward to having a few guests in. I think I have pa Papa Drew lined up again and also RV Prepper want to thank you for uh, have them going to be interviewing us and uh, so on and so on. But anyway, yeah, um, uh, I hope some of the stories we told today were um, entertaining and also some of them concerning. So uh, I hope there's some lessons to be learned here. So anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is our loyal listeners. Um, I, I I really do appreciate the one people that they know that I haven't been consistent on my uh, getting my episodes out, and I apologize. Um, I really can't describe just how crazy it's been. Um, and I want to thank those who have been really great, oh, great about the comments and stuff. Understanding what me and Sherry doing, um, learning about caregiving. So, game changer, I got to tell you. It, it was something else but anyway we uh i uh, will try to uh get back on uh course here we are um looking at rebuilding the studio again um kind of looking forward to that because you know with the first one you design is like it gets out of control and it's like uh i could have made that better so um now that we have a second chance in the other room where i have more room <clears throat> uh we can condense it and at the same time, make it uh, uh, really nice. <laughs> That's all I can say. And uh, a lot of people, by the way, just remind, reminders, a lot of times when we do interviews now, we're using Skype and uh, using uh, visuals. So uh, uh, kind of enhances the radio show just a little bit. So, yeah, if you're interested in being on Good Talk Radio, have a channel that you want to promote or you have a great story that you like to share or a concern or something in the future like uh, I'd really like to get somebody who really knows what's going on out there about uh, what's going on in BLM land what they're doing with uh, you know I, I know seeing more fees less stay time um, regulations and things are increasing problems that you may be seeing out there that seem to be getting worse and it seems like it's only been in the last few years that it's really getting to a point where you, you know that they're going to start making rules and they're going to start making regulations and closing off areas that we can't go to anymore uh, with our rvs <clears throat> and uh it's sad it's no different than the days though when we're younger we used to go hunting in certain areas like warehouser and things like that and they used to open their land and so many people abused it and damaged things that they locked it up. And then farmers quit letting us use some of their properties because people were shooting up their signs or shooting up their fences and, or leaving gates open. And uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, history replays itself. And if you don't think it does, uh, uh, just trust me, it, it's uh, on and on and on. Uh, 
same result. Um, and it's only it's that one or two percent of people um, ruin it for all of us. And now one or two percent of people seem to have a say in things, and that's not right. I, I'm still a majority rules kind of guy, but I guess uh, I'm uh, I'm out of date. <laughs> I know you guys out there, uh, there's, a, I, there's a lot of guys that think the same way I do. Like, we just shake our heads going, I'm just going with the flow. Or we're getting too old to even care anymore. And just like, but we, just like me, and I'm sure you guys too, we're all going, but our kid, our grandkids and our kids are going to live with all this new stuff. And man, do we feel bad for them. They don't have half the freedoms we do or did. And, uh, and only because a handful of people abuse things and throw garbage around and don't take care of our lands. And so, uh, boy, if you ever come up with ideas of how to police these people, let me know. But I think talking about it's important. And that's why I continually like to bring the subject up. And the more we all talk about it, the more that maybe a few of these guys that are doing this kind of stuff will set, you know, have a second thoughts about it and maybe pick up that trash a little and, and uh, take a little better care of their facilities as they probably are going to start witnessing they can't go back to some of the places they love to go to because they got closed off or they charge a uh, really high fee. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to Good Talk Radio. Uh, looking forward to some interviews coming up. And uh, I want everybody to be safe out there and um, get yourself an RV if you haven't got one yet. They're a lot of fun. They can be used for all kinds of purposes. You don't have to be a full-timer and enjoy a great RV. So till next time, guys, bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.